Hello again, Kate Brown Pernia for Why Not a Hat? This video is just a short postscript to the video I posted a couple of days ago, wherein we made the cotton flowers on the styrofoam balls. Remember that? Well, this is the Ghanese fabric one that we finished in that last video. And I wanted to show you what it inspired in the way of this hat. So let's get started. <clears throat> the color of this fabric I thought was so wonderful. I went looking for what I could put put it on and I found this wonderful sort of golden sisal straw hat that somebody had given me. It was a hat that had never been completed. It was crown and brim separated and there'd been a lot of good hand stitching done to wire the edges and cover them with crinoline, but I didn't care for the shape of the hat. So I decided to remake it into a new hat to go with my Ghanese Blossom. So here's what we did. I had been looking at a, a, a vintage hat book that had some 40s and 30s hats in it. I love those eras. And one of the things I noticed was that many of the hats curved down over the back of the head like this. And I wanted to give that a try. Didn't really have the shape uh, block that I saw in the book, but I went looking through my collection to see what I had that I might be able to adapt. And here's what I came up with. This little hat block that I've had for many years, found it in somebody's garage who was clearing things out and sold it to me very inexpensively. And this little hat I think is from the either the 50s or possibly the 40s, and it, fa it forms a hat that I believe sits on the back of the head. And uh, it's not a flattering style for me and not one that many of my clients had been attracted to. So I hadn't used it all that much, but it came in handy when I started thinking about that curve over the back of the head. Because I thought, what if I did it the other direction? What if I blocked front to back this way and utilized that curve to shape over the head? So that's what I did. I took the crown of the sisal straw, wet it and formed it over the block and it came out just the way I wanted it to, which was great. Then I took a press cloth and I flattened the brim with my steam iron with the press cloth over the sisal so I wouldn't burn any um, sizing that might be in the straw. And it was great, except that the crown seam on, on, the, uh, on the crown of the hat was much smaller than the hole that was left in the brim to place it on the crown. So what do you do then? You have to make an adaptation. So what I tried, what I decided to do was to create a pleat. As you can see here, I just folded the straw until the opening in the brim was the correct size for the crown. And I stitched them together, wired the edge, and then proceeded to cover it. And I got this nice swirl, which gives a lot of movement to the hat. And uh, I really love the way it turned out. I even made a hat pin to go with it. Since I have long hair, I can keep hats on my head with hat pins. So anyway, I just wanted to show that to you to, uh, to get you started on trying out some experimentation with the things that you learn on Why Not a Hat? 